Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series in Hearts of Iron 4, Kaiser Redux as Austria. More specifically, we're going to be going down the National Populist Tree of Austria, which you can see uh, is uh, right here, Dolphish's Austrian Nation. So this episode, hopefully by the end of it, we'll actually have already switched our ideology. It'll also, I guess, kind of also act as a guide for how to actually switch your ideology to National Populist in the Kaiser Redux mod. So get all our troops ready to go. We're gonna put on the Austrian border for, or the Italian border for now, because I really think that's probably the more likely place we'll be going to war. Because right now, you have the Italian Federation in the north, you have the Socialists down here in the south. Because again, this is slightly different than just Vanilla Kaiser, right? There's a lot more uh, things going on in it. Uh, we're gonna go for our basic researches, which is gonna be uh, research speed. Followed up with production efficiency cap, construction speed, and then why not the 1918? Infantry equipment, a uh, nice place for us to start. We'll also build, let's just say, two military factories here. I think that seems okay for us to start. Silent super events, we don't need to worry about that. We'll get our Army Navy experience for free, thank you. And we probably want, let's say, four rifles, one support equipment, one artillery. Do we have any motorized divisions? No, so why not also go one into interwar fighters? Seem like an okay place for us to go for now. We're not building any um, convoys, but that's okay. We'll build the convoys after all of these ships have finished being built. We don't really need, I think, a massive navy as Austria. As long as we can kind of control the Adriatic, we're mostly okay. Uh, we don't have a template for equipment, but we'll worry about that in the future. All of our boats... Let's have you all... Why not go to... No, this is actually the largest um, naval yard. So let's send our troops there. Combined just into one big navy. So the situation of Austria in 1936. Despite standing amongst the victors of the Weltkrieg, the war revealed the divisions of culture, class, and ideology within the empire ever so clearly. And the inner unrest continued on, the, on as the war ended. Kaiser Karl, following in the footsteps of the assassinated Franz Ferdinand and trying to reform the multinational Austro-Hungarian Empire into something that could survive in the 20th century, launched a series of large-scale reforms. However, his efforts were largely blocked by nobility on the Hungarian side of the empire, leading to his plans of federalization progressing only slowly and only in the Austrian side of the empire. However, many feel that there's hope for Austria. The last decades were hard in the empire, but the effort is starting to pay off. Uh, the Austria is now a federal state, has calmed down, but it cannot be said the same for Transnistria. It is, however, unlikely that the Carpathian Basin will continue to remain in Magyar hands, since Hungary pe the hung Hungary's peoples have been gazing upon the liberties across the Lithuania, wishing for to have such autonomy as for themselves. Whether a form will be the way to find its way to Hungary, only the Kaiser knows for sure. So... I mean, apparently you guys are actually, you're vassal, you're vassal. You are technically considered an independent country within the faction. I'm not too sure actually why that would be the case. But we're currently, you know, we have our own little faction, Austro-Hungarian Empire. The International is just kind of hanging out over here. And other than that, not too much is different, I think. I mean, it looks like Transmir has significantly more territory. South and America is kind of doing okay. It's really just this area that's got the most amount of changes that we have to really worry about. So, voting, voting rights in a legation council. The legation cities were formed in 1928 as a result of the American intervention in the Zilifenian conflict. They believed it was going to spill on into an open war between the Japanese and their Fenian puppets and the Zili and their German backers. When a passenger chain, train was attacked by Chinese warlords, America saw an opportunity to mediate not only in order to create a more permanent solution to the instability of the East, but also to enshrine the open-door policy in China, which allows all power equal access to Chinese markets. Consisting of all the official concessions of China, as well as a 30-mile neutral zone, the Legation Cities, officially known as the International Mandate for the Chinese Concessions, also host a forum, the Legation Council. For various powers within the Chinese interest to cooperate in Far Eastern policy, although the Austro-Hungarian Empire does have a voting position on this council, the, a, we mostly abstain on the harebrained plans proposed by the Americans, German, and Japanese, supporting only such evidently reasonable motions as economic relief for the Chinese and our own citizens. So negative 2% consumer goods, plus 25% political power, of course, we are going to get to worrying with Black Monday in a handful of months. So, when we have our election, which is going to happen in March, we need to uh, elect the Social Democrats to be in charge of the country. Uh, which will fall by a handful more um, decisions before then. But we have March, and then we have to do, you know, Black Monday, all that stuff. So, the VF organized protest. Yet again, the VF has arrived in the streets to complain of our government and asking to be in power again. 
Every time it gets worse, this time no different. The worst in Austria history, the VF continues to get more powerful each year. No matter how hard the government tries to stop them, there's only one choice left to silence them, which is violence. Lethal force engaged. We're going to do some political power, 10% stability. As unfortunate as that is, we'll just kind of shoot them and we'll see if everything's okay. But of course, the VF are the people that we are inevitably going to want to be in charge of the country overall. Also, I did not select the National Focus. I don't have a National Focus to select, so you know what? Never mind. We're, we're completely okay. I don't think anything shows up until... Nothing shows up until the election, right? Yeah, not until March. And of course, eventually we want to try to create a, a faction of our own. Because we do need to worry about what, you know, Romania is doing. we got to worry about what Serbia is doing, what Greece is doing. Because they're all going to join up in a big war against Bulgaria in the future. Which we, we don't want. I mean, we, we can't stop it. But if we can somehow get all these people to join on our side, that would be nice. We do need 10% world tension for us to actually start even planning to do this. And I wonder if there's any such way that we can... Promotion Romania, Intervention Romania. I would like to intervene at some point if we could. Like, I wouldn't be against that. And there we go, the Black Monday has now happened. I don't know what negative modifiers we're going to get. Jackmans have been elected to France, that's okay. And Black Mos Monday has hit Austria. Black Monday has hit Germany, and it would not take long for the shockwaves ripples across Europe. Given its close proximity, Austria was among the first to be affected. The economy is struggling, and troubling times lie ahead. So, horrible construction speed. Factory output is just dreadful. So everything is looking, I would say, really bad. But that's okay, because we're not really missing any equipment for now. Uh, which is nice. You guys have elected the Jackmans. So the Jackmans, I think, do have a special tree here. So it begins the revolution. Because, yeah, you should unlock. I don't know when that would happen. Or if it even does. Because it does require a very specific person, Maurice Therese, to be in charge. So the Austrian election of 1936. Since federalization begun, the Austrian elections are mostly reduced to the German-speaking parts of the empire. Two major parties have dominated Austrian politics, the CS and the SDAP. This year's election, too, is harshly fought. The SDAP and the CS have very different ideas of dealing with the ongoing economic crisis. The SDAP's program focuses on easing the workers' plight with a focus on unemployment benefits and government intervention. The CS, on the other hand, follows a program of severe austerity measurements. It's time for the people to decide. So again, we're about one month until then. The polls cut away into a republic. And I'm not actually too sure which way that leads, because you are going... I actually think the Polish Republic actually think joins the Russians at some point. I think they're more likely to join the Russian faction in the future. So the Fatherland Front wants to participate in the elections. The VF, having always been barred from participating in elections, requested with formal with formality be given the chances to, uh, in the upcoming elections. Um, I, wait, I'm going to read that over again. The VF, having always been barred from participating in elections, request with formality be given a chance in the upcoming elections. Their extremist views, their methods, and threat would bring our country makes them unstable. It's time to tell them the same thing. Get that we're gonna lose five percent versatility. But get out of here! They're complaining now, which is not surprising. The VF complains. In the wake of our oncoming denial, uh, that we that we can see coming from many kilometers away, the VF have taken again to the streets to complain about our government. They whine and beg for participation in general election nineteen thirty six, which they obviously will not get. And they only worse by the day. Boo hoo too bad. So they're gonna lose another five percent ability, some more popularity there. So, opening school, opening of school and SDAP rally. Even if the economic situation in Austria has been dire for such a while, the first years after the Wildkrieg, when the CS and the SDAP still cooperated in their governance, the Austrian Empire saw withdrawal, widespread reforms in education and welfare. Academics for specializing workers began construction, workers' pensions were introduced, and child labor was once and for all eliminated. Vienna has uh, been regarded as a front rattle in socialist circles. Today, a new ac uh, academy is opening in the 9th district of Vienna, which the SDAP sees as major success. Many speeches by various politicians are held, Karl Renner always standing in the background. Renner has been effective head of party since he found the goodwill of the Emperor during the field Krieg with the policy of Bergen and cooperation with the Crown. So their efforts are praiseworthy. We want to get the SDAP uh, to be as powerful as possible so they do end up winning the election. Right now they have 35 to the SCS's 27. The Roots of Obsession. Forthy found himself going with the ideals of money more and more lately. The higher-ups of Fume have taken notice and been kind as back, worrying of an independent obsession. A few of the highest ranks have already begun active, actively attempting to suppress any want for such copious amounts of money, but as 
uh, we have so much money, it will be difficult. Horthy himself has noticed it is strange that he has been talked like this, with the whole pirate thing and all. For now, it's just a minor problem. We should keep an eye out for it. And Alder denounces the SDAP. Frederick Alder, son of the former head of the SDAP and a radical socialist, mostly known for shooting Graf Sterner in protest of Wildkrieg, has denounced the SDAP as the kind of socialism that is just serving the establishment. Radicals will be radicals. So the two and a half, the second and a half international does have two percent of the vote now. Interestingly enough, the second half international was a real Austrian party at some point in the past. So the CS invites the Prince Otto to hunt. The CS, the party of the petite bourgeoisie, the Catholic Church, and the conservative countryside usually refrains from holding large public events. In Vienna, they in instead focus their attention on smaller private meetings. One such planned meeting will be in the form of a hunt in Wienerswald. Prince Otto was formally invited to join the hunt, having enjoyed the autostratic education the Habsburg era is already used to such social occasions. Uh, we want to reduce their popularity here, so the CS should now, I think, be at 25. We just don't want them to be a popular party. We can endorse the SDAP, which gives them a little bit more support. I'm not wasting my political power on that whatsoever. It's going to be a waste of our time. And soon we'll be able to start doing some economic rehabilitation plans. Japanese troops garrison Taijin. See, the economic woes have gone down hard in the legation cities and have decided to outsource much of the security operations to the Japanese to keep their economy afloat. While there's little we can do to stop them, there's been much uproar in the council over the shifting balance of power, and what calls on Japan not to abuse their position within the city. So does that actually just go to Japan? Uh, tensions up towards the north. No, so it is still controlled by the legation cities. The ALG also does exist here. So see what they do, if anything, in the future. Or if they... I don't actually know what the ALG can do in Kaiser Redux. And it looks like the National Populists will be taking control in Russia, which is, is fine for us. Uh, because at some point, we are going to go to war with the Germans. Uh, as you can see, if we go down our focus tree, right down here, we'll have the ability to annex them. The question, of course, is when would we want to push that claim? I really don't think we want to go to war with Germany, at least until the Second Weltkrieg actually begins. Because we want Germany to be fighting a major war on this border, maybe a war in Russia, and then we completely steamroll through the south. The elections. The final tally is in after a hard-fought election campaign. We shall now see who the winner is. And the winner, of course, is going to be the SDAP. Austria is social democratic. Congratulations to them. Also, it's March 10th, which actually means I should have been doing... Uh... Never mind, we can't do this quite yet. But I don't think we want to do this. Because while we can remove national spirit, socialist promises, which is political power gain for more social democratic support, I honestly don't think we want to do any of this. Because it's going to be a waste of our political power, I believe, at least. Um, still also don't want to spend any points on that. I think we just really want... Oh, early mobilization? Yes, please. Let's actually spend our political power on that instead. It's going to be pretty, pretty nice for us. We do have 44% party support, but that doesn't really matter so much. Because, again, we're going to queue the government very soon. I, I try to remember exactly when the events actually do fire. I, I did do a test run to make sure everything works out relatively okay. Um, infantry division. Yeah. Let's train up, let's say, four divisions there. Should be an okay amount. We're going to be missing a lot of rifles and artillery pieces. But that's okay, I think, for now. Um, after this, let's, of course, go for the next level of research speed. So the VF organized riot. Instead of taking to the streets today, the VF have taken to the streets... Instead of taking to the streets today, the VF have taken to the streets today in a riot spanning many cities and towns across Austria all over the nation. Quite a striking number of people came out to demonstrate in favor of the VF, and as per usual, being violent on civil towards our law-abiding citizens. This has been the worst of the VF of our, in our history, has been discussed before the, if we should ban them, which has resurfaced this time. What should we do about the crude rabble-rousers? Let us ban their party. Many people support the Fatherland Front. This isn't a very good idea. We do get more political power, which is nice. We get some more stability, which is also quite nice. And I'm sure nothing bad could possibly ever happen. Nothing. No, it, it's, it's going fine. The Social Democrats have nothing to fear but fear itself. 
And also maybe the Fatherland front, depending on how things go very, very soon. Government official killed in broad daylight. A prominent official of ours has been killed in broad daylight by an unknown assailant. It's suspected that said assailant is a member of the VF, attempting to make a point. All that stupid assassination has done is driven his party more to the ground, as we'll be doing something about them soon. So you lose the political power. Honestly, that's not that big of a deal. And how actually expensive are these folks? Is? 60 days. 60 days is not bad at all. The invasion of um, Germany is actually only a 10-day focus, which is not bad. And it's 1936 Vienna bombing. Another brain-dead VF terrorist has attempted to make an example of the impures by exploding a bomb in Vienna, toppling many buildings and blowing away a chunk of the government building. Uh, indeed, the casualties have been tallied, numbering around 32. Kaiser Collar has expressed great displeasure in the attack and has condemned the VF's action. Elgo Bertulsus has responded that he has not told the party to commit such horrible acts and has announced it as well. So more political power lost, more stability lost. So 32 people are now dead in Vienna, unfortunately. But I'm sure it's not a big deal at all. We're fine. And the v demands from VF leader Egobert Durfus. Since their party is now banned and unable to operate in any political office, Egobert Durfus has demanded that to unban the party or else. Of course, reason is the most laughable one, but it's very much plausible that his large support base will do something in his name. Shall we give him give him the command? Do we fail to uh, Dolphin Man's demands, or shall we shut him down just so we shut down his extremist party? Why don't you just stay underground? We're going to get a little bit more political power. You get more um, popularity here, but we want them to stay underground for now. Which should lead to the coup d'etat. And a death of Pius the 11th. With the passing of the Pope, what action should we take? Mourn the people's death or attempt to install a loyal duke uh, gives me the Toscana on the throne. Doing so will make the Italian Federation a puppet of Austria, though it would greatly displease many Catholics of our nation. So we lose some political power if we press our claims, or we can send our consolidates to Rome. I think you'll probably end up joining our faction at some point in the future anyways. So I'm going to gain 100 political power. We're not going to press our claims right now. In fact, I think at this point we've kind of lost our claims entirely, but that's okay. Don't worry about that too, too much. And the Fatherland Front storms the Imperial Palace. You see that the Fatherland Front has pushed to the edge. A legion of their armed contingents stormed the Imperial Palace today, guns blazing. It seems that the Vietnamese police have been conspiring with Dolphus in an attempt as the police did not intervene in the shootout after a tense few minutes. The VF installs Dolphus as Chancellor, resulting in Kaiser Kahlo becoming a figurehead. So no matter what, we're going to get a lot of power and stability here. But we have now installed the Fatherland Front. And now what should we do? Because now we have like a ton of options here. We are still dealing with Black Monday. We're actually also still dealing with Socialist Promises. Which I'm assuming you... Yeah, get rid of that. The Slovenes and SDA people we thrown into a rage. Shall we do this? So what do we want to do first? A lot of resources is not bad. An extra resource slot is also pretty good. Actually, give a lot of modifiers. Let's actually ban the SDAP. Just get them out of here. They have 31% support. The Dolphus Constitution. A new constitution of Austria has been put into effect today, giving Dolphus the supreme authority over Austria and truly establishing Karl as a figurehead to maintain stability. It's hailed by the VF, finally giving them what they need, but to everyone else, it effectively ends... Austria's democratic systems. To, that, to them, Austria is now an evil dictatorship. More political power, though, for us, and I will take it. So it looks like the Nanji clique has capitulated, which is completely okay for us. Ah, uh, the game did crash, uh, which is unfortunate. So I'll be back. Um, we'll, we'll resume this video in just a moment. Well, hopefully this time the game won't crash. We've already read that event, because we did have to go down to the autosave, unfortunately. But we do have 270 political power, so what do we want to do with it? I mean, I can't change any of these laws. Probably some industrial abilities? 15% is pretty good. But I had, do not have the ability to get that one going. So you know what? Let's just go for you for now. Probably get an infantry upgrade in the future. We can still have control. But I really don't think we need more party popularity. We have 42%, which I would consider to be a pretty okay uh, number. Because once we suppress to you, we're going to get another event, the SDAP protest. But who cares what they have to say, really? 
You can disable the legislator. People are getting elected all over the place. Pirates in the Mediterranean! Recent upturn of pirates have been noted in the Mediterranean Sea, specifically the Adriatic, where captains have noted far away flags of the Jolly Roger, waving destroyers and submarines. No casualties have been noted yet, but it's wise to tell someone to get rid of them early. Horsley would do the job for us. He's the best option, right? Our trusted Admiral Horsley will take them down. I mean, it's Horsley. Horsley, be in charge of the Navy, please, and thank you. The pen is... France has already declared war? You've already declared war on each other? Really? It's only 1936. I didn't know you. I didn't even know you could go to war so early. Either way, you guys fight them out amongst yourselves. It actually probably is going to lead to the international being stronger. Uh, assuming they can maybe win this war pretty early on, and also what the Canadians end up doing, I'm not too too sure. The pen is mightier than the sword. When Miklos Horth, the admiral of the Austrian Empire, is approached with his orders to hunt down the pirates. He, represent, he presented an alternative, more profitable method of dealing with the pirates. He suggests that we try to negotiate with them, start targeting us, and in return we'll pay them just enough money to satisfy their greed. The preparation was a shock to the uh, parties involved, who were split as per usual on the course of action. But it was decided in a vote that Horthy was to attempt to black uh, proceedings instead, and here's to hoping that that ends up succeeding. I think that might be an old event, seeing as it's... it's like, parties? What parties? No parties. Oh, no, no, this is... When the Jacobins take over. Yeah, the... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, you can actually... Revanchist. Sire for revenge. Austria gets bonus attack against the country. But, like... I thought... Because I know there's an event, like, depending on which person France elects... Oh, they're already both going to war with them, huh? Well... I guess it's the second Vild Creek now, huh? So, I guess we'll end this episode here. So, thanks everybody for watching, I guess. Alright, so, thanks for me. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Nodule, click thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.